Here is a quick overview on how my spoil board and my steel honeycomb bed are secured and squared up. This basic setup allows me to remove the steel bed, reinsert it and everything will remain squared up. My OLM3 is currently attached to the spoil board with PVC risers, so the spoil board and the laser cannot move at this time. Now that the laser and the spoil board are secured down, I then made a grid in light burn and burned the grid markings onto the spoil board to use as reference points to help me line up the steel honeycomb bed. Once I lined up the steel bed, I ran the frame around the bed multiple times until the bed looked squared with the template file I created in Lightburn. Once the bed and template looked squared, I then pushed those small wood blocks against the bed, making sure not to move it, and then secured the wood blocks with a pin nailer. Now I have a permanent, secured steel bed that can easily be removed and replaced, while always remaining squared up with the template file in Lightburn. That is the important part. So now I will remove my wood template, as I can easily put it back and square it up, with the steel bed to make everything square again. I have burned some text markings on the template, to show how it should be inserted back. Now we can use the same logic here, and make templates out of wood or cardboard. I was making a lot of Christmas ornaments, so I made a 14 inch by 14 inch wood template, that I could square up with the steel bed. As long as you have a nice 90 degree square edge, you can push the template against the square edge of the bed and cut it out with the template grid that you have in Lightburn. This allows me to remove the templates and then reinsert them for future engraving or cutting, as they will always be square with the grid template in Lightburn. As you can see the laser cutter is very rigid and does not move, and I have found no issue with the way that it currently set up. Can we make it better, of course? I used half-inch PVC pipe to make some risers, so that the laser module will be at the right height when using the steel honeycomb bed. I cut them with my miter saw, so that they were very precise in height, as you can see. I am working backwards here, as I had many people asking about my setup, but originally I did not film anything when making it. So originally, I went and cut my spoil board out of a piece of plywood, I then drilled some holes in the spoil board where the PVC risers would get inserted. I basically measured the middle point of each foot on the bottom of the OLM3 and marked the spots. Then I went and drilled out the holes. The drill bits I had on hand were a little bit too small or the exact size of the pipe and it did not allow for the PVC pipe to slide in. I used a heat gun to heat the PVC pipe and soften it up, and then inserted the PVC pipe it into the holes I drilled. It made a very tight fit, as you can see. This could have been done better, but I was just using what I had on hand. Next, just insert the rubber grommet feet on the bottom of the OLM3, into the top of the PVC risers. Now let's take a closer look at the risers, and see how they are seated in the holes I drilled. As you can see they are pushed all the way through, to the bottom of the spoil board. They are tapered from the heat gun, so they will not go any farther than the spoil board. And that is a basic and cheap way of making some risers for your OLM. The most important part to me is I can easily remove the machine and pieces, and then reassemble it and everything will be square with my light burn template grid. I did buy the rotary tool, but have not assembled it. With the way it is set up, you should be able to cut the PVC risers to any size and replace them to get a proper height. And I have some new ideas on how to cut out some supports out of some 3mm plywood and make some PVC mounts. Stay tuned as that is to come.